Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how we upcycle the cedar lane chest that we found in pretty rough shape and we gave it some new fancy legs and we gave it a new paint job and transformed it into this beauty that it is today. So if you want to see how I did that, keep on watching. some of these videos a little bit shorter especially whenever it involves a lot of steps that I may have shown you in previous videos so I'm going to link a couple of videos down below that have more in-depth tutorials on patching holes with bundle how to spray how to um, brush something and get a smooth finish stuff like that so if you want a more in-depth tutorial watch those links below on the description box otherwise let's just get right into this one so the biggest problem that we had is that the bottom of this part was particle board and it was completely falling apart, delaminating, it had to come off. So we took that part off and we built an entire new trim around the edges. Then we also put a screw on this little mechanism that holds the door open. There was nothing else wrong with it, just the screw. And then there was this crack that ran across the entire bottom of it. The biggest transformation here was to add a platform with legs. And actually Corey did this part and he completely forgot to film the process. But essentially we added a platform at the bottom and then attached the new legs that he made to that platform. That way that big crack that runs down the middle of the chest it's still there but it doesn't interfere with the structure of the chest because there's an entire new base underneath it but we kept it in there because it's cedar and you want the cedar inside so i've already patched a lot of the holes this is the back of the dresser um a problem that we keep having is that this part keeps like seeping through the wood and I've already tried to dry it. It's been inside in the climate control or condition for a couple of days, but every time we bring it outside, it starts doing that and it's a little bit sticky. So um, there's a couple of pieces like that. So I asked my father-in-law, he's been a carpenter for many years and he suggested that I should used um, that I should use sanding sealer as a base and then I'll probably still shellac on top of it. I'm not going to show you the shellac part because it's essentially the same thing. Spray it on really thin. Again, if you want more in-depth videos of that, you can watch some of my previous ones. But uh, yeah, just lay a really thin coat and then move on to spraying the paint. Next, I'm going to use this color from Dixie Belle. It is called Sandbar and as you can see, it's super thick. I've had it for a while um, and so I'm going to need to water it down. I usually water down most of my paint when I'm going to spray it anyway. So it was lumpy, I added some water, stir it really well until there's no more lumps. And because I was afraid there was too many lumps and debris, I'm going to run it through a strainer so it doesn't clog up my sprayer. If you're painting by hand, you probably don't have to worry about any of this. But sometimes you get some debris stuck on your paint and it's good to do it if you think it's excessively lumpy. Next, I'm going to cover the legs. I probably could have painted it without the legs on, but um, I wanted to see how it was going to look. So I'm going to cover them with some recycled paper and then I'm going to go ahead and start spraying. So as you saw from the thumbnail, my idea was to put a little sun with sun rays on the top of this chest just to tie it in with the legs and give it that glam look. Um, I'm going to do it with tape, but if you have a cutting machine like a Cricut, a Silhouette, anything of that sort, uh, this will be a really good use. Just cut a shape that you want so that you can use it as a stencil and then you can go ahead and, um, and transfer it onto the furniture. Okay guys, hopefully the washing machine isn't too loud. But I moved inside and what I'm going to do next is that I have an idea for the pattern. I want to do like a sun with sun rays coming out of it in gold and I think that's going to look really pretty. So to guide me, I'm going to draw the circle where I want the rays to go and then I'll draw the inner circle where I want the sun to be. And so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it like perfectly circled. I might have to figure out how to cut pattern. I have a silhouette that I borrowed from my sister-in-law 
but I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't had the time to figure out how to use it and I know cutting a circle is probably the easiest thing, but I don't know how to do it. I'm in the middle of finals and I don't have time for that. <laughs> okay, so I have a roll of twine and what I did is I just cut a piece and tied it to my pencil and you want to stay towards the top so that your pencil doesn't wiggle too much. So I'm going to center the string with the center where the lock is and I'm going to tape it so it doesn't move on me um, and I'm gonna keep the pencil really taut. I want to make sure I keep it at this sort of the same angle that I had it there. Okay so that's how far my rays of sunshine are gonna go and now I want to figure out my inner circle. For my sun rays, I am going to use the speed square and center it at the pivot line so that I can have equally spaced sun rays and I'm going to space them at 15 degrees each so you'll see me pivoting every 15 degrees and marking my line straight. I'm going to use this level as a straight edge to extend my lines all the way to the outermost circle because that's where my longest sun rays are going to end. After I extended all my lines, I went ahead and marked an eighth of an inch on either side of those lines to make a total of a quarter inch thick and that is the thickness of my sun rays just as a reference guide and I did those lines, those markings on the center circle and then on the outer circle so I could have a reference and follow that straight line. You guys, I lost the footage of me doing this part, but I feel like y'all can figure it out, right? I essentially just used the tape to line it along the lines that I had just drawn, the ones that are an eighth of an inch on either side of my center line, and then I used an X-Acto knife and a ruler to cut any excess of this uh, tape so that I could have a clear path on all of my sun rays, and then I grabbed a little brush and I started painting with my favorite gold paint, which is Dixie Bell Gold Digger. It is a little sheer, so we're going to need to do a few coats, but it's all good. Now let's go ahead and take that tape off. After taking that, I grabbed a wet rag and I sort of wiped off those lines with the pencil. If you need to touch up with paint, go ahead and do that now. After my design was done, I let it dry overnight and then I went ahead and put one cut of sealer and of course something always happens so I got too heavy handed with it and it started dripping. Let me show you what it looked like and how I fixed it. So I don't know if you can see here but I got super heavy handed with my top coat. You can see that line there. It really isn't noticeable unless you look at it from the right angle or you feel it because it's definitely bumpy. So I'm going to have to sand that down and do it again. Okay, I'm going to do this by hand because I don't want to get too aggressive with it. Um, but I need to stay flat, so I'm going to use my little sanding block. And I'm just going to wrap it on some 220 grit paper that I used already. And just sort of go in the direction of the grain. While I'm at it, I'm going to sand the whole thing. I'm trying to show you these little bumps that are like little debris that gets trapped on the paint or sealer or whatever you're putting on. And so that's why I like to sand between coats. They're really not noticeable unless you run your hands over them, but I know they're there and that's why I like to do that. And then you can also see since it's my first coat of uh, top coat, it's a little streaky because I sprayed it horizontally and so that usually happens with the first coat. It evens out but my main concern are all those little bumps and pieces of debris so I'm going to sand the whole thing very lightly and then keep going with my spray. 
Okay, after sanding it again, then you just go ahead and apply as many coats of sealer as you consider appropriate. You can also do wax. Um, I don't presume this chest will have a lot of like traffic like a table like a table does. So you can probably get away with just waxing it. Again, videos linked down below. so cool if you want to see more videos don't forget to subscribe and you know the usual follows on the social media comment subscribe share all of that see you next time bye was that you living in someone else's dreams <laughs>